Howdy everyone, Pocha here with an Age of Magic video and in today's video we're going to go over Dexter the Dragonkin Rogue, the next hero to come to the game. We'll go over her stats, her abilities, have a look at what she's like in the arena and at the end we'll go over whether she's worth going for or not. So without waiting any longer, let's jump into it and get this done. Going over Dexter's stats, we've got hit points to 0.4 million speed 215, which is okay for a rogue, but her passive does increase her speed, so it's actually a lot higher than that. Armor 22k, magic damage resistance 23k, basic damage 199k, critical hit chance 34, which is pretty decent, critical damage 484k, and we'll go over her in-depth stats. You guys can pause it wherever you want, have a look at anything you wish to look at. And there you go, there's all that information for you. So now we'll jump into the arena, look at her abilities, the animations, and what they do. So going over Dex's basic attack, we have Dragon Strike, triggers the Rogue class mark. Damages one target, has a 20% chance per Dragonkin ally to cast Dot Acid on the target. The Dot does 25% of Dax's damage for two turns. So we're going to go ahead and attack the enemy Loki and look at the animation ability. There you go. So it seems that she strikes twice and applies a dot per strike, which is pretty interesting. Two dots, pretty nice. What is good and what is bad about this ability? Well, I like the fact that we've got a new dot acid. I think that could be used pretty well in the future. Acid feels like something that should definitely be part of the Rarachni kit. The bugs, if they ever change the bugs, acid should be the way they work. I do not like the 20% per Dragonkin ally because now... Just from the basic attack, she is already being slightly limited to a Dragonkin faction. And even with five Dragonkins now, I just don't feel like it's a good faction overall. But that's her basic attack. Pretty standard stuff. I like the dot. It could potentially do some decent damage. But with the amount of characters that can remove debuffs and all that jizzy jazz, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it has some future use. But as for right now, it, it'd be a very niche thing. Moving on to Dex's first special, we have Dragon Claws triggers the rogue class mark, damages one target. If the target is under the dot acid, then all the damage of the debuff is caused immediately. So that's pretty nice. I like that. If Guitar is in the party, the ability's damage will increase by 40% and an activated acid debuff will take off 30% more HP. That's interesting. So I'm interested to know if that is per acid stack. So as you can see, the Loki has two stacks. Is that going to do extra damage? Because that has a 20% chance per Dragonkin ally to block the use of special abilities for two turns. So, oh, okay, let's go ahead and look at the animation on the enemy Lokia. It should do a lot of damage because of the actor. Yep. Yeah. All right, so it didn't seem like it did all that much damage. It triggers the two dots on them, which is pretty nice. I think being able to blow up the dots is actually really nice now that I think about it because there's so many characters in the game that can remove debuffs. If you yourself can remove the debuff but get some extra damage out of it, I think that's really neat. It's getting to the point, having a whole turn free of then being able to trigger it with before they're removed. So I think it is neat. It would be cool if other heroes could apply the acid debuff. It would make sense. It just seems like such... Uh, the dot just seems useless on the Dragon King team. Because it's only Dexter that can apply it. I know she's a rogue, but I feel like Acid is definitely a bug thing. It's an interesting debuff. Has a 20% per... I hate the 20% thing. Honestly, I hate the 20% thing. Dexa and Katar should be two unison fighters. They should work purely together. Yes, they should get benefits from working with Dragon Kin, but those two heroes should just be a duo thing. They should be synergizing between each other and making each other stronger. I hate this 20% per Dragon Kin thing because even with these two heroes, Dragon Kin is still just so weak. So weak. So the ability has the potential to do some okay damage. If you can get those dots... Stacking up, awesome. But like I said, it's only Qatar, I got Qatar, Dexa that applies them. Maybe if Dexa could apply them as well, 
or maybe the range damager if he or she is ever released or the dragon kim boss i don't know but uh, it's just it just doesn't seem efficient Moving on to Dex's second special, we have Dragon Fang. Again, triggers the rogue class mark. Damages one target. Has an 80% chance to remove all buffs. Why? Why 80%? Just make it 100. The ability's damage increases by 15% each time Katar performs a strike. If the target is a boss, the damage is doubled. Casts an acid dot on the target. The dot that does 20% of Dex's, Dex's damage for three turns on a five-turn cooldown. So we'll go ahead and look at the animation again on the enemy, Lokia. Okay, pretty neat. Does a lot of damage. She disappears, appears in front of her enemy and strikes him. That's, that's pretty cool. Let's go over the ability. Again, 80% to remove all busts. Just make it 100. Why not just make it 100? Why 80? Why does there need to be the small chance that you're going to get screwed? You might as well just make it 50%. 40%. Why? Why make it 8? The ability's damage increases by 15% each time Qatar performs a strike. Now, you see, that's what I mean. They, they're working together. That's nice. I like that. I did test this. It's per strike. So if we actually click on Qatar... And we'll use his Steel Whirlwind, which strikes one target three times. This will actually give Dex a three strike. So we're going to use it against Lokia. And you will see one, two, three strikes. So that increases the damage output. Each strike buffs her. So that's neat. I like that. If the target is a boss, the damage is doubled. Okay, that's pretty neat. It's encouraging players to attack other heroes other than the healer. I know a lot of time... Well, the meta's changed a lot. Healers aren't necessarily the main targets anymore. But it's in, it's. I like how he, she has a, an extra benefit against a class that's not a healer. It, it makes it neat. And applies the Acid Dot, which is nice. Again, three for three. It does it over three turns. Okay. So, as you can see, it, it has three dots on him, though. So, that's interesting. So if you trigger that, again, that's going to do a lot of damage. But again, you've got to get to the next turn. So it's almost like you don't want to use her first special first. You want some dots to be on the enemy. But again, the first special has the chance of... What's wrong with my beanie? Of locking the enemy down. So it's up to you. 5 turn cooldown. Oh, I'm just really not liking the RNG. The 80% makes no sense. At least this ability isn't reliant on Dragon Kin, but... I don't know. Yeah. We'll move over to her passive and have a look at that. See if it increases her use in any way. Okay. So we have Dex's passive rushing dragon increases own speed by 6% per dragon can ally. If Guitar is in the party, then the bonus for each ally is doubled. Okay. So pretty decent speed boost. Increases, increases Guitar's initiative by 30% at the start of the battle. Nice. Increases own and Guitar's dodge by 25%. Guitar's bonus is doubled okay so lots of dodge initiative on guitar increases own speed so kind of okay again it's it's pushing you run her with a dragon kin team so she gets the most use out of her kit the passive is obviously pretty honestly not obviously honestly pretty average i reckon especially when these two characters aren't necessarily going to be the first people hit Maybe if the dodge went to Karana, gave her a little bit more survivability, that would be awesome because having a little look at this team and testing it against a few meta teams, Karana is, is oh, very underwhelming compared to the healers in the game at the moment. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm honestly not a fan of Katar. I keep calling it Qatar, of Dexar. And it might just be because of how underwhelming the Dragon Kin are altogether. There is no real strong synergy pushing them. Like, there's nothing that they have going for them. They seem decent on paper. When you look at Fyra, who can give Rogar immense defenses, 
sure, when you look at Dexa and Karana and Qatar together, they have a little bit of a synergy going. But again, going against the teams in the game, they just they crumble. What? It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. You've got Dark Elves, for example, can bypass the Taunt from Rogar easily. You've got Roynar, who can remove debuffs. You can chuck him on almost any team. Barbarians, Belara will get rid of the Taunt, get rid of buffs. Let's look at the healers for those teams. You use Azariel. She can self-sustain, pretty much. If an enemy healer is healing, that's going to boost her back up. Cathbad is almost untouchable for the first duration of part of the fight. No debuffs affect him at all. Well. He starts off with a a bonus shield to protect him. Lucky can give himself uh, herself uh, defensive bonuses with her healing and healing over time. What else do we have? We've got um, what other Gloriana? Gloriana is instantly hidden as a she, you know Gloriana. Her kit doesn't even heal herself, but she still gives so much to the team and is as she does so well. Karana is just not great. I know this is a Dexar video, but when you're forcing a hero to be used in a faction that doesn't place up against any of the meta teams, you really, really lower the value of that hero. And Dex's value decreases dramatically because of the team she's put with and being forced. If it was changed, if Dexar and... Qatar removed all their synergy from Dragonkin and had a synergy together and then other Dragonkin could benefit them, those two would be an awesome combination to have on a team. You have a lot more ability to mix and match. You could... Oh, it's just so many more possibilities. At the moment, I don't know. Honestly, I don't think Dexar will be worth it if you're looking to boost the magic pass i probably wouldn't be using your money on the dexa one in saying that i have no idea none at all what the dragon king boss or range damager is going to do they have the potential to make the faction better as it stands of what's in the game at the moment i'm um, yeah dexa a little underwhelming and it really shines a light on Karana needing a little bit of a rework because it's it's just not great. It's not great. So, yeah, if you're looking for advice on what you should do on the next Magic Pass, again, it's up to you. Do whatever you want. If you max every hero, then by all means, go max Dexter as well. But in terms of use, maybe a Mana Farmer in Clan Wars, that's about it. But there's a lot more testing that can be done. I only get to use it for a short period of time. I've been rambling on too long now. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability. Wherever you are in the world, until next time, please take care of yourself.